My name is Asia, I'm the Basic Christian, and today we're talking about God as the cloud, how he covered Israel in the wilderness, and what that means for his character. As I make this video right now, God is actively delivering me. And recently, God has had me in the book of Exodus. I don't know about you, but I've really been intentional about learning God's character and making him a personal God, not just a God that sits far away on a faraway throne that sees me every now and then. I want God to sit on the throne of my heart. I want him to be in my spirit, part of my spirit, part of my being, part of my everyday living and everyday decisions. I know God sits on high, but I want him to sit on the throne of my heart. And in order to make God a personal God, I have to learn more about his character. So today let's talk about God as the God who covers, corrects, and delivers. So one of God's names in scripture is Jehovah Mapalti, which means the Lord, my deliverer. I'll link it up here somewhere so you can watch it later if you're interested. But in one of the previous videos that I made, remember I was talking about a Hebrew word and when the Hebrew word ends in I, that's normally a possession that's showing a personal, my possession. So when you see I in Hebrew, Hebrew, it means my. And as we read the Bible, we have to remember to stand outside the text, look at what's going on, look at what God is saying about himself and what he's doing for his people, and then find a way to make that personal and make God a personal God and take the principles from what we're reading and apply it to our own relationship with God. God wants you to know him. And if you're going to know God, you've got to understand that God is a personal God who's multifaceted. So he wants you to know him, but he wants you to know him how he needs to show up for you and how he desires to show up for you. Jesus isn't just the world savior, he's your savior, and he wants you to get to know him. God is able to be all that we need and everything and more that we desire. In the book of Exodus, God sent Moses and Aaron to Pharaoh, and they requested that Israel be set free. But Pharaoh, as you probably have heard, he would not let the people go. And as time passed, God sent plagues. And every time a new plague came, God would demand that his people be set free. And with every demand and every plague, Pharaoh kept saying no. And as Pharaoh said no, his heart became harder and harder and the plagues got more and more intense. Egypt's land was destroyed more and more by each plague that hit. And each plague, as it progressed, they became significantly more severe. Even unto God taking the firstborn of every house and of every animal. While God's people were set apart, Egypt suffered loss and damage, all because Pharaoh didn't want to free Israel. So every doorpost that was covered in the blood of the lamb was actually passed over. That's where the Passover comes from. God was serious about freeing Israel. And we see how serious God was about freeing Israel as soon as they hit the Red Sea. Israel was safe, Israel was freed, and as soon as Pharaoh tried to turn back around and leave out of the Red Sea, it crashed down on them. And after the miracle at the Red Sea, Israel found themselves in the wilderness. They complained to Moses for water and God gave them water. Then Israel complained about food. So God gave them food. He gave them manna in the morning and he gave them quail at night. And it was always enough to feed their household with nothing left over. No one was short and no one had excess. And to Israel in the book of Exodus, God shows us that he is a deliverer. He is Jehovah Mapalti. We serve a God who's multifaceted. Israel in the wilderness shows us that God is both a provider, a protector, and a deliverer. God can be all that you need him to be whenever you need him to be, however you need him to be. To be. He is the I am. As time passed, Israel found themselves in the wilderness with clothes that didn't wear down and with food that didn't run out. God provided all that they needed, but in Exodus 13 verses 20 through 22, the Bible says, So they took their journey from Succoth and encamped in Etham at the edge of the wilderness. And the Lord went before them by day in a pillar of cloud to lead the way, and by night in a pillar of fire to give them light, so as to go by day and night. He did not take away the pillar of cloud by day or the pillar of fire by night from before the people. Jehovah Mapalti, God my deliverer, he was big enough and God enough to lead Israel. He led them through the wilderness as a cloud by day and a pillar of fire by night. I couldn't help but wonder what God revealed about his character. My brain started going. What can we make about God being the cloud in the wilderness personal? 
How is God your cloud? God's grand display to Israel in the wilderness says a lot about who he can be to us today right now because God doesn't change. His character remains the same. As we work through this word, let God come off that far away throne and let him come onto the throne that's in your heart. That is his preferred position anyway. God is your deliverer. When the accusations come, God is your deliverer. When your back is against the wall, God is your deliverer. When your bank account is more negative than your grandpa, God is your deliverer. God is your deliverer. Jehovah Mepalti is your deliverer. He goes before you by day in the cloud and he goes before you by fire in the night. Jesus will never leave you. He will never forsake you and you only need to call his name. When Moses called on God to supply to Israel while they were in the wilderness, God delivered them as he was delivering them. God is more than able to meet your needs. He can provide even while he's in the process of providing. He was providing a new land for them. He was providing the promised land. He was providing freedom. And while he was providing those things, he was also providing quail. He was also providing manna. He was also providing water. He was also providing clothing that didn't tatter or tear. God provided while he provided. That's how good he is. He is able. He is Jehovah Mapalti. God chose to reveal himself as a cloud. And it's amazing to look at our world and be able to see parts of God's character. God's imprint is rampant throughout all of creation. Clouds give us rain and that rain nourishes the land. And the rain from heavy clouds brings life to plants and sustains the animals and replenishes waterways. In Deuteronomy 11 verses 13 through 14, the Bible says, So if you faithfully obey the commands I am giving you today to love the Lord your God and to serve him with all your heart and with all your soul, then I will send rain on your land in its season, both autumn and spring rains, so that you may gather in your grain new wine and olive oil. God called for his people to love, follow, and obey him. And if they did that, God guaranteed that they would be blessed. God showed up to Israel in the wilderness as a rain bringer for a reason. I pray that as you love, follow, and obey Jesus, that he reigns on your life. I pray that he opens the heavens above you. I pray that he gives you a blessing that you cannot hold. I pray that the reign of Christ falls on your life so fully that you have to start giving things away because your hands are so full that you don't know what to do with it. You are so blessed beyond measure that you can't measure. All you can do is say thank you. Jesus is more than able and he's more than willing. You have only three steps to follow. Love the Lord with all your heart, follow him and obey him. And according to God's word, when the season is right, when the season is right, it will rain. God is in the cloud. He's shielding you. He's covering you. He's protecting you and he's guiding you and he's raining on you. Everyone loves a nice sunny day. 75 degrees, a cool breeze, a few clouds in the sky. You can go for a walk. You can take your kids to a park. You can go to a cookout or a barbecue. You can play soccer. You can play a sport outside, whatever you like to do outside. Everyone loves those moments. But what about when God is the cloud that brings lightning that affects your vision? And what about the God as the cloud that brings torrential rains that washes away all the useless things? And what about when that cloud twists just enough to become a tornado? And when that tornado forms, it touches down and it uproots everything in your life. Is God still good and is God still God if he's the same cloud that's the 75 degree day and the same cloud that allows the tornado? Is God still your deliverer, Jehovah Mapalti, if he uproots everything in your life. All throughout the Bible, we're described as plants and trees. And God allowed that for a reason. In the first Psalm verses one through six, the Bible says, blessed is the man who walks not in the counsel of the wicked, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sits in the seat of scoffers, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And on his law, he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by streams of water that yield its fruit in its season. From my own personal experience, I can tell you that when you love God, when you follow God and you serve God, sometimes God is the cloud that brings a tornado. Even though you have to face a tornado, even though things around you are going haywire, even though the world looks fallen and broken, even though the people around you have completely lost their minds, 
The tornado has an eye and it sits in the cloud. Just when it seems like everything in life is being uprooted and torn apart and shaken, you are in the eye. Jesus rids you of the things and the people who are not for you. And at the same time, while he's uprooting everything around you, he also keeps you. You are under the cover of his watchful eye. You are under the cover of his cloud and you are deeply loved by the God who is the cloud who controls all things. Israel began to know God God as Jehovah Mapalti, as the God that delivers and the God that covers, and through the Red Sea as the tornado that destroys and preserves all at the same time. As they went into the Red Sea, it parted and they made their way to the shoreline. The Bible says that the water stood like a corridor to them, but as it stood open and dry for them, those same corridor waters of the Red Sea crashed down on Pharaoh and all of his people. God preserved his people as he destroyed their oppressors. Even in the natural elements of escaping Egypt and being in the wilderness, God was displaying his character and who he was and who he wanted to be to them. God was revealing his character as the great I am. God was causing Israel to have deeper faith as they were being delivered. Jesus wants us to be planted in him like trees. And when a tornado touches down, it's not just big trees that get saved. It's the little trees with the deep roots. It's the big trees with the deep roots. Anything that's not deeply rooted will be destroyed when the tornado hits. The trees with the deepest roots get to keep standing in the storm. The Bible says in John 15, five, I am the vine, you are the branches. If you remain in me and I in you, you will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. So you might lose a leaf and a branch might snap, but when you're planted in Christ, you cannot be uprooted. When you are the tree and Jesus is the ground that you are planted in, everything around you might be destroyed, but you get to keep living, you get to keep growing, you get to keep bearing fruit, you get to keep standing. Everyone wants the cloud that helps the rainbow exist, but no one wants to meet the cloud that causes destruction. The spirit of the Lord says that both are him and both are for us. And when he says that both are for us, he means that the cloud that causes rain and the cloud that causes tornadoes are both for us, to bless us. There's blessing in God's yes and in his no. There's blessing in God's left hand and in his right hand. There is blessing in God's go and there's blessing in God's stay. Jesus is the cloud who destroys, covers, and keeps. But to get to the rain, sometimes you got to deal with a tornado or two. He is the I am. All that you need in any form that he chooses to take. Thank you, Jesus, that he is always for you, even in the storm. So I hope you enjoyed this. Again, my name is Asia. I am the basic Christian. Join me next week. I have another video. Remember in the wilderness, God was both the cloud and the fire. We are covering fire next week. And if you are not subscribed, hit the subscribe button, share this with someone, leave a comment. Let me know what character of God that you see in the cloud that makes him your personal God. And and as a reminder, I'm going to link in the description below. I have a website. All of this is in blog form, everything written out with the scriptures on the basicchristian.com. And don't forget to like, follow, subscribe, and share. I love you guys. Have a great week and I'll see you next week. Peace.